Shut up and don't pretend to be sick. You are a useless housewife. I feel very uncomfortable. But my husband ran out of the house and pushed me aside. Husband and wife lascivious support each other. When they are sick and healthy. But he brings me to despair. When I slowly lost consciousness. Then someone came to my rescue unexpectedly. I am Wendy. 32 years old. And I am married to my husband Sam the same age. About a year ago. I was living a normal life as a working wife. We met at work. He agreed that I would continue to work after marriage. And we shared the housework at home. But he was not very good at it. I only gave him some simple things to do. And in the end he didn't show any reluctance and was very proactive. So I didn't have any complaints about my marriage. Once I felt a little under the weather and went to see a doctor. Congratulations. You have just entered the seventh week. To my surprise. I found out that I was pregnant that day. And Sam and I shared our happiness together. He is going to be a father. It doesn't feel real. This is what it started. It will grow little by little. We are full of excitement. I am full of hope for a happy future. But although my expectations have changed differently, the reality has changed. Hey. Where is my dinner? It's your turn to do the housework today. You didn't even clean the bathtub. I'm sorry. I don't feel well, so I can't do anything today. I was in a state of intense morning sickness. During the first three months of my pregnancy, I could barely breathe. I felt sick all day. And could hardly stand the fact that I spent most of my time sleeping at home. I couldn't even go to work. And kept calling in sick. And Sam didn't even try to understand my pain. Didn't give me slack. Didn't work. Didn't do housework. Thought I was just lazy. And he openly showed his dissatisfaction. Don't rely on me when I am together. Just because you and I are pregnant. You want me to do all the housework. And you want me to work. If you are not ready. How can you be a mother? When I think about how he can do this to me. I understand that after a wife who can't support him. He comes home from intense work is just an annoyance for him. I want to go back to my parents house until my condition stabilizes. But I'm afraid to create a tricky distance between us. I hope my morning sickness is temporary. It will stop in another two months. Until then I just need to let it work. That's what I tell myself. But its contemptuous behavior accelerates morning sickness. Somehow. After a while. But the illness lasts for a long time. I repeatedly go in and out of the hospital. I decide to take a vacation for a while. If I push myself too hard. What happens to my children? I can't forgive myself. I and my doctor and my work. We make a decision. Sam doesn't understand so much. Although don't rely on me so much. If you don't rely on me. It's your fault. I can't work. Although it may be true. My decision is to protect the child in my belly. Why he needs to plan. I put forward his unreasonable attitude. Which is about the cost of living. I only got a small pocket money during my vacation. Can you contribute a little more from your salary? I play with him why should I also pay your share? He doesn't help I ask myself. Whether I should continue to marry him. My anxiety is growing like a balloon. I thought everything would be alright. When I was pregnant. How could I go wrong? My mother-in-law asked me. How are you doing? Wendy. One day I got a call from her. And she divorced her husband. Sam raised him alone when she was in middle school. She was very sharp but gentle and kind to me. You should be walking around during pregnancy. It must be difficult for my son to do housework. While the work. You need to be responsible. 
I feel desperate. And told her. She was not a bad person and at that time. I could understand her point of view. I think she told me not to slack off and do all the housework. Especially if you take time off to work. Yes. You were right. I was planning to discuss Sam with her. But I felt completely isolated after. She didn't seem to take into account my feelings. Let me know when you needed any help after she hung up. But I was still troubled by this situation. And then a disaster came to me. And I had been feverish and sleepy all morning. And nausea came and went. On and off. I was in a weak state trying to prepare Sam's breakfast. And then lying on the sofa. You don't need to show off. And you're sick and he complained and looked at me. After he left work I made him terrible. But my condition didn't get any better. I wasn't likely to cook dinner for him. I was going to order takeout but then. I remembered that our money was tight. Sam gave me far from enough money. I had to withdraw it from our savings every month. And besides the medical expenses. For my upcoming delivery were not cheap. And at this rate we would go bankrupt. Before our baby was born. I called Sam nervously. And I was really sick today I'm sorry. But I can't cook dinner can you pick something up on the way back? What exactly are you talking about your housewife? Yeah but if I can't move. What should I do? But if I'm too busy after you go get something. And don't let me do your work. He hung up on me. And I cried quietly. Later that night. I heard the front door shut violently. And I had gone home again. Hey, dear. Dinner is all right. I'm going out for a drink. I was burning all over at the time. I could hardly stand up. I felt very uncomfortable. I needed you to stay with me tonight. I begged him to shut up quickly and get out of my way. You're just a useless housewife. Pretending to be sick all the time. And then working outside. I didn't have the strength to go back to bed. Collapsed at the door someone owed me. I screamed my thoughts in despair. But no one answered I was alone in the house. And then I heard someone's voice. From afar in my fading consciousness. A familiar voice spoke to me and stayed by me. Who was it? And I lost consciousness. As I walked. I found the ant staring anxiously at me. I was lying in the hospital bed. Wendy. Oh thank God you're awake. She happened to come and call an ambulance. When she found me slumped at the door. You are safe. And now that your child is all right. I went to the doctor and wiped her tears. And she quickly left the room. According to the doctor. I was extremely insane and had seasonal flu. The child would be in danger if Annie didn't find me. And I had a fever all day. But I was surprised to learn that. The temperature was 104 degrees Fahrenheit. When I was taken away. But Annie. Why are you there? Sam told me you were slacking off. He asked me to discipline you. He kept complaining. So she finally came to assess the situation. Found me unconscious. I'm sorry. I didn't even listen to what you said. But there was another reason for the lecture. That was given to you for her visit. I also wanted to thank you that. This sweater was your birthday present. And although your birthday was last week. I always gave her presents on her birthday and Mother's Day. Every year since I got married. I got old and the cold weather felt harsh. I remember she had mentioned it to me. So I gave her a sweater that was a little bright in color to help the young look. But the design was simple. Thank you for remembering everything. I said you were always focused and caring for others. I was worried if you really did nothing at home. As Sam said and then it happened. I was sorry her tears were defective. Because she held my hand tightly. No it didn't matter I was just about to talk to you about him. 
but it was just a little awkward and I was also there she cried before her. And it made me feel relieved to know that she was on my side. She sat together for a while and said to me angrily, this is my son. But what he has done is unforgivable. How dare he treat the mother of his child in such a terrible way. Her mouth trembled with rage. And she held her handkerchief tightly. So what are you going to do with him? I told her about my plan. And she nodded in agreement. I'm on your side. And I will always support you. After I made up my mind to take action. She promised to accompany me home in the hospital a week later. I didn't hear Sam speak. I stayed there. It didn't matter anymore. Anyway. When we got home there was a terrible stench in the air. And even thought it was only seven days. And I felt my nose was going to fold up. What was that smell? It smelled like a wild bee sleeping here. And almost made me laugh. But I thought it smelled like the worst in the world. Sam was drooling and snoring on the sofa in the living room. Wake up. You idiot. He was immediately awakened from his dream by any screaming. He jumped down. And there was a poor man on the sofa. Yes, oh. What, mom? Wendy, you have been away from home for several days. And what are you doing? He immediately complained to me. But Annie said, when we were in the hospital. What is this mess? Zoos are better than this. She was right. In just a week. The house was a dump. With a pile of beer cans and food scraps in the sink. Damp underwear scattered all over the floor. And the floor was sticky as if liquid had spilled all over the floor. It's worse than the zoo. I wonder how you live here. I murdered myself. He stared at me. Don't talk so hard. I doubt you would make such a mess even if you were a baby. I didn't know you were incapable of taking care of yourself. I spoke my mind calmly. Which was actually true. And when I thought about it. I realized that I had done quite a lot of cleaning and laundry. And when I was at home, at least it wasn't as messy as a cage in a zoo. And I never imagined that he was a chimpanzee with no life skills. Why you left Wendy behind that night? He was completely overwhelmed by her pressure. No matter how old they were. They always looked like they were vulnerable to their mother. Just soaked like a child telling me not to go out drinking. You mean she pretended to be sick? Even though she was pale when she had a high fever. Do you have brains? She is a relatively calm person. And only once did I hear her swear words. He kept silent and stared at me. How dare you speak ill of me? He could almost hear his thoughts. And then he changed. In a low growling voice. Don't get carried away. I have been offering you help. If it were me. In the past I would have feared his anger. But I am no longer such a timid woman. You know. Well. Then you don't have to support me anymore. I'm ready. Now what do you mean? I mean I don't need you anymore. Who would want to marry a big baby? Who can't do anything by himself? I've had enough. I may endure his outburst against me and wait. No, I won't. I thought we could solve it through conversation and therapy. When I was in the hospital. He made a mess of the house and couldn't live like a normal adult. As a husband or father. He scored less than zero. By the way. This is drinking with your friends. But I want to know what you are doing. As a mother. I gave him a dead look. He amuses me. It's none of your business. Yes, it's hers. She has a right to know. Because she's your wife. Now tell us the truth. Sam shivered in Ein's stern. Well, he firmly bored words. If you don't want to tell us it's okay. You've been caught. I'll show you the evidence. No way. At that moment. 
His face changed, friend. Yes, you'd better confess immediately. You are not very good at this. Are you? He lowered his head. And succumbed to our persistent pursuit. After I got pregnant. He had an affair with a colleague. Which is very common. What is her name? Which department she works in? How often do you see her? We interrogated him with a smirk. I stopped the phone recording. Well done. We have a confession tape. Thank you very much for being honest with each other. His expression changed to a grimace again. When I thanked him in glee. You lied to me, he cried. Yeah so I can't believe you're lying to me. And you hired an investigator. And thank you for lying to me. He was frustrated and blamed me for this I fully understood his logic. You tried to grab my attention. So you pretended to be sick. We were the same. And I began to feel even more miserable. When I saw him blankly refusing to make his own mistakes. Sighed deeply, muttered. You selfish arrogance and liar like your father. No, not my father he was shocked by this unexpected remark. Which is understandable. His parents divorced when he was in middle school. He hated his father. According to what I learned. His father had a major strike. Often drunk. Became violent. And he never thought of being told that. He was like the man he despised. Annie said. I can tell you that when your father made me sick. I was pregnant. And he went out drinking. I think you should get a divorce.